God's kindness leads you toward repentance. God's kindness leads you to toward repentance. Romans 2, 4. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we celebrate thy mercies and forgivenesses during these observance of Lenten season. Lord, we thank for having guided the early church fathers to institute the observance of Lenten season and help us to realize the need of repentance and forgiveness. Lord, we also thank Thee for the ministry of St. Paul, who was able to teach the early Christian communities to learn the real meaning of the gospel. We seek the presence when we reflect his writings to the Romans. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Paul writes to this Christian community in the Roman city to be aware of God's kindness and the need of <coughs> repentance. Chapter 2 is believed to be addressed to the Jewish Christian community. Chapter 1 from 18 to the end of the chapter was meant to Gentile Christians. Chapter 2 verses 1 to chapter 3, verse 8, was meant to these Jewish Christians. Today we are reflecting on verse 4, chapter 2, verse 4. Or do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness, tolerance and patience, not realizing that God's kindness leads you toward repentance? We are called to understand the meaning of the word patience. Patience does not mean slowness. There is a difference between the word patience and slowness. And he teaches this very important word. And he wants them to understand kindness, tolerance, patience, in order to realize the meaning of repentance. When our Lord Jesus began his ministry, the first verse was this one. Repent, the kingdom of God is at hand, and believe the good news. Every part of his ministry is based on this introductory verse. He calls for repentance. And therefore, he writes to the Jewish Christians that they should realize the real meaning of repentance as they always used to claim that they were special. They were chosen. They were selected. 
and used to claim that others were not so. That was the reality during the first and second century among Jewish Christians. And that's why he wants them to know the real meaning. St. Peter was the one who was able to teach those spiritual community who were there in Jerusalem taking part in the feast of Passover. On the 50th day, that is the end of the harvest of barley, at the beginning of the harvest of wheat. From the day of Passover, they count 49 days. Pentecost means 58th day, I'm without the null, 58th day. There is nothing more than that. Penta. Penta means, you know, five. Pentecost, 58th day. On 50th day, they were blessed with the power of the Holy Spirit. Peter was speaking in Hebrew, and many were able to understand his preaching in their own languages. 99 percentage of those who are, who are gathering that were Jewish community settled down in many parts of the Asia Minor. They always used to travel to Jerusalem to observe the feast of Passover. St. Peter used the opportunity of coming together as Jewish religious community and started preaching to them from the Old Testament understanding of Messiah. He brings out how Jesus is related with the mission of David the king and finally ends with you are those who put him on the cross but God made him Messiah and Savior. And many were attracted by his preaching and 3,000 people were baptized. And from that day onwards, Peter was accepted by the Christian community as number one leader. Number one among the apostles. He wrote two letters Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9 is very important in terms of realizing and understanding the meaning of Romans 2, 4. Second Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish. God is not particular to punish you. Rather, he wants all to repent. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So do not misunderstand the patience of God of the Bible, the patience of God of the Bible. First time, Paul makes these charges against Jewish Christians in this letter to the Romans. This is the first time, chapter 2, <coughs> verses 3 and 4, verses 3 and 4. Let me also read verse 3, Romans 2, 3. So when you, a mere man, pass judgment on them and yet do the same things, 
do you think you will escape god's judgment you think you are special since you male were circumcised and therefore it discriminate non jewish christians this is unfair similarly we christians claim we are special since we were baptized confirmed take part holy communion nothing nothing of these visible ritualistic thing will help us to be qualified to escape from the wrath of our god and more than that which is very important repentance in the case of repentance we christians and those who are not christians will be treated equally baptism is the initiation to be qualified to understand the word of god in order to repent in order to repent when you grow up at the age of 15 or 16 we are confirmed again it is reiterated repentance is important when we take part in the holy eucharist we are given a time for reflection on the need of repentance it is very important to learn <clears throat> the parable of rich and lazarus luke chapter 16 luke chapter 16 verse 29 luke 16 verse 29 abraham replied they have moses and prophets let them listen to them the rich man pleads with abraham father abraham please send lazarus to our house i have five brothers they must be saved if lazarus goes to that place to my house they may be taught to repent no nothing doing there is no possibilities of sending lazarus they have enough teaching they have the law of moses torah and they have kitabim they they have nabim they have prophetic books and again verse 30 the rich man pleads with abraham luke 16:30 no father abraham he said but if someone from the dead goes to them they will repent he said to him abraham speaks to him if they do not listen to moses and the prophets they will not be convinced that even if someone raises from the dead see how our lord teaches the learning community when he was an historical man teaching the local communities the need of repentance through this parable of rich and lazarus he is very clear in teaching them nothing of your rituals like circumcision taking part in passover going to jerusalem temple nothing will qualify and that's why when they go to the jerusalem temple during passover they celebrate at least for 7 days passover hundreds and hundreds of people used to walk through the jerusalem city they used to erect many stages on the streets book of jeremiah book of ruth and book of esther they used to read very loudly 
on all these days, when they pass by, these three books are read during the festival season of Passover. They, at the time of Jesus' time, we do not, did not have any kind of books, printed books, but there were scrolls which were kept in the Jerusalem temple. And scribes used to read book from the book of Jeremiah, book of Ruth, and book of Esther. Apart from that, there were many synagogues. As we know, when there are at least 12 male Jews in a village, they can have their own worship center called synagogue, a chapel, small chapel. They can have their own leader, necessarily not from the Levitic community, not a priest. Leader is not a priest. Leader used to be always an acceptable person by the entire village who used to have good character without any vices and they are selected by the local community as the leader. In these centers, they used to teach. We learn from chapter 4 of Gospel on St. Luke, Jesus goes to the synagogue at Nazareth. Book of Isaiah was given to him, and he takes Isaiah chapter 1, reads us from 1 to 2. This is one of the evidence that we see from the New Testament tradition. There, there were weekly teaching at synagogues. Apart from that, these three books are read during festival season. And that's why Jesus says that they have Moses and prophets. When again he makes pleas with Abraham, it is again said by Abraham, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, we are now encouraged and taught to read only the Bible, not individuals. Please do not depend on preachers, pastors to learn biblical truth. We are educated, yet some are illiterate. We have no knowledge of the biblical truths because we take it granted that someone will teach and we are carried away by false teachings. They mesmerize. They make us slaves. They control us. And we are happy to be slaves to preachers. And we are put to many kinds of exploitation. In terms of money, energy, they exploit from us. They divide our families, the name of spirituality. And therefore, now we are taught the repentance is important. We need to learn the meaning of repentance. For that, we are given Bible. During the time of Jesus, he made these conditions. Books of law, five books, Moses' books, and prophetical books, but enough. Now we have New Testament. Teachings of our Lord Jesus are recorded. These all help us to repent, and these are given us freely in order to understand the need of repentance in order to be qualified to be part of the members of the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you.
for the writings of St. Paul, help us to understand his teachings in order to be qualified in the process of building the kingdom of God here in this yet. In Jesus' name we pray.